what I've been doing is we are actually generating our images. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. So for Alex, the right now makes it make our way to that to just say, wow, I guess I can change. So, okay. So, I'm going to draw something up. Yeah. 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 
PHP developer primarily, and this is uh, WooCommerce, at least talking about WooCommerce, e-com in general, so if this is not what you're supposed to be in, is that what they always say in school, you're in the wrong room, something like that. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, advertising, I am not talking about marketing, there's a slight difference, uh, marketing encompasses things like research, image 
addition to advertising. And advertising is pretty much directly broadcasting to a marketplace or a client base um, your or information <coughs> about your product that is available to market. I hope that makes sense. So marketing involves stuff like writing nice content, like interviewing your customers, things like that. Advertising is putting ads places. There goes the term, advertising. Uh, so today what we're going to be talking about are different um, approaches to advertising, different things you can do, some things you probably already know, I think most people know about Google and Facebook and the like. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about them and also about um, other online players you might not know about and offline things that seem passe but sometimes still work. All right. Um, before I get too far, how many people here are developers? As in write PHP? All right, how many people here are implementers, let's say, as it can copy paste some PHP? All right. All right, um, just getting a sense of what amount of talking I need to do. All right, so how many people have an existing website? Specifically, an existing e commerce site. Can you raise your hands again? Okay, how many are using WordPress or WooCommerce? How many are using something else? Shopify, big commerce solution? Always the odd woman out, Marcy. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, All right, so this will make it a little easier than if um, we're talking primarily about. Uh, WordPress. So before we get too far, um, let me start talking about the stuff that is, let's say, old school that you guys are not expecting me to discuss today, and that is things like local or offline advertising. Let me write some of these on the board. When we think of traditional media, Traditional generally just means old in this day and age. Things like newspapers, direct mail, this means postcards for those who didn't have cords on their phones. Um, and things like billboards, etc. These are options you can use for advertising your website. Um, unless you're at some large scale, it's probably not cost effective, right? Um, if there's a sign that's like 777777 or something, the DUI guy, mm -hmm. and he has a sign very close to the police station, that is a billboard worth paying for, right? Uh, it doesn't make sense to put it somewhere else, but in that case, maybe it is worth it because if you went to his website or if you just got out or you're going in, you see the site is very germane to you at that moment, right? Uh, for most of us, people have to get on a phone or a computer to access our website. So these things are not quite as attractive or, uh, to people. When you're now advertising on here, you're not going to get that immediate action for them to go to your website. Now, it's still worth, in some cases, advertising in this offline media because part of marketing in general is to get people to remember your name, right? So another example of offline marketing is this guy here with his Yeti shirt, right? This being Ann Arbor, or not Ann Arbor, this being Austin, sorry, this being Austin, Texas, You'll see hundreds of people walking around with <coughs> shirts from Indeed or Google or, I can't think of who else right now, um, Great Joy or WordPress. I think uh, my daughter's, half of my daughter's wardrobe are WordPress related t shirts. Um, that is another example of off offline marketing, right? I, let's say I've never heard of a company like HubSpot or I've never heard of a company like Twilio. Um, and I don't know if you guys have or not, HubSpot is a site for marketing, Twilio is a site to let you 
send texts similar to how you send emails programmatically. Um, I've never heard of these guys, but I've seen 30 people walking around town and I recognize that logo, right? When I finally land on that site one day where I'm picking between two or three similar services, I don't actively know it, but something in the back of my mind says, that Twilio logo feels a little bit more familiar than the other two logos, right? It makes me more likely to pick it. Um, have you guys heard of uh, bias in lineups, police lineups? Mm -hmm. So let's assume there are four or five guys here. It's almost always guys, right? Mm -hmm. Four or five guys here, and you're sitting, standing in the back, and they tell you to pick out the person that did it to you, right? And usually they don't say pick out the person that did it to you. They say pick out the person you recognize, right? So if all else being equal, if the person that punched you in the face is right there, you'll probably remember that person you point them out. If that person is not in the list, but they showed you before you went in, a set of pictures and one of those faces was in those pictures, you don't recognize anybody on that list, right? Because these are all strangers. You just looked at 12 pictures of strangers, you don't know who anybody is. <laughs> However, when you now look at that same lineup, you've been preceded with one of those faces that's on the wall, right? So this is a dirty trick that some departments have gotten in trouble for before. Um, it's obviously not something you're supposed to do. But if that works in the case of police, this stuff when we're talking about logos also works for regular people in you know, non-criminal situations, right? The more you see a logo, whether or not you know anything about it, the more it sticks in your head. Is, does, is there anybody here that does not know what McDonald's looks like? Do you know how early kids recognize McDonald's? 18 months. Okay. So a logo, especially if you have a logo for your website, is powerful. When you're advertising, don't forget to show your logo. If you have a decent one. If it sucks, maybe you should pass on. Um, all right. So other examples of offline marketing are things like... Um, Baseball games, right? Not the professionals, think of all the little league games. You have your local Chevy dealership sponsor, you know, the, the Wildcats or the Broncos or whatever you want to call your team name, and XYZ organization, which is your baseball team, has a little pamphlet. On the back of the pamphlet <coughs> is that Chevy dealer's logo. Now, of course, everybody knows Chevy, everybody knows Toyota, et cetera, et cetera. The point is that when I'm thinking about buying a car and I'm cycling through the options, again, if all else being equal, the one that I have been primed for is one I'm more likely to act on. That all makes sense, right? All right, cool. So let's move from the basics of offline to some local advertising. So local, I mean, offline advertising is generally local, right? So, what are other things here? We talked about t-shirts, brochures. If you ever go to a fancy concert, opera, symphony or something, um, people that advertise there are looking for a certain kind of client, looking for a certain kind of cachet, right? But other types of local advertisement is online. So the ones that you guys might think of off the top of your head would be something like Yelp, right? So I go and I want to find a locksmith, right? And I can use Google and find a locksmith. I can use Yelp and find a locksmith. For a long time, Google just returned Yelp results. Right? Um, Google obviously is also a good case because they have their places in Google for Business, which will list the same kind of information. There are sites like Angie's List. And all those sites, if you have a services business, especially a local services business, so if you're a gunsmith, if you make signs, if you print out pamphlets, if you power wash 
um, driveways, those kind of things. These are places that are obvious um, avenues for you to advertise. Right? Obviously, if you're a power washer, maybe a billboard does not make sense. But the newspaper might, and direct mail might. Right? When is pollen time of the year? It might not be a bad idea to offer a half off price on power washing. Get the pollen off. Right? Other examples of online local advertising are places like Craigslist. I'm assuming I'm saying stuff most of you guys already know, right? So, but if not, feel free to ask questions. Places like Craigslist, um, and then also certain areas, if you have Facebook um, community search or community uh, classifieds, uh, Kajibi, and similar sites that are classified sites. I think it's Kajibi, let me see. Next door, that's not a bad one. Kajabi, okay. You can tell this is about my area. <laughs> All right, so Kajabi is one. Um, so next door is a site that is supposed to be for you to set up communities in, around your neighborhood so you can be like, hey, did anybody notice that suspicious blah, blah, blah in the neighborhood? Who's Rottweiler is running around town? Or more likely, who's who's a chihuahua is running around the neighborhood, right? So those are places you can post that kind of information. Nextdoor is not specifically designed for advertising, um, like for you as an end user, but you can buy advertising on those networks, right? All right, so the top, let me talk about the top 10 sites on the internet. Actually, I should probably just pull it up here, let's see. Top 10 US sites. So, unless that has changed, those sites will be Google, YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, Reddit, Yahoo, Wikipedia, Twitter, eBay, and Netflix. Okay. All of those, except for two, except advertising. So Google and YouTube are part of Google's network, so you can do ads there via AdWords. Facebook is Facebook's network, obviously, um, but you can also add Instagram, which is a um, high profit area to advertise. And coming soon will most likely be WhatsApp, where you're, uh, all three of them are part of Facebook's network. And so those will be interesting places to advertise to. Um, Amazon makes sense to advertise to if you are selling something on Amazon, obviously. Um, and once you get past those sites, you start getting significantly diminishing returns. Um, Yahoo is still a very big site, but there's not a uh, specific cohort of people that check out the site. So if you go to Reddit, Reddit is also another site that's sort of everybody on the internet. Um, Yahoo is also everybody on the internet. But unlike Yahoo, mm -hmm. people still have Hotmail accounts, man. Yeah, I, use, I use it. Yeah. So Yahoo is like the number six site on the internet still. That's also true, right? So, I mean... Just because you don't use it doesn't mean the internet doesn't use it, right? So, um, so a lot of people that are like, let's say, if you're into Reddit, you're probably not into Yahoo. If you're into Yahoo, you're probably not into Reddit. Those are two slightly different markets based on demographics, age, tech savviness, and the like. But they're pretty much targeting the same kind of market. They're sort of the general internet user for different generations. It says Yahoo is number nine. It's number nine right now? Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> so Wikipedia doesn't really have avenue for marketing, and Netflix also does not have an avenue for marketing or advertising. Um, but obviously you can advertise on Twilio, or not Twilio, Twitter directly, and you can also pay Twitter to get your ads placed. OK? 
Um, in my opinion, uh, Twitter is too ephemeral for people to really um, remember you on there. It's better for you to post as yourself on Twitter, in my opinion, um, because if somebody's following you or your post has been recommended by somebody else, it's more likely to stick than the stuff that you're sort of trying to scroll through or scroll past. Okay. Um, eBay is a tricky one because in theory, just like Amazon, um, you should advertise on eBay if you sell a lot of product on eBay. Um, however, a lot of people that shop on eBay also shop on sites like Etsy and shop on sites on, like Amazon. So even if you have a low product count on eBay, it might make sense to advertise there because you're likely to also catch the people that shop on the other marketplaces. <laughs> Uh, obviously, I just mentioned Etsy, which is not one of the top 10 or even like top 25 sites, but it's another place where you can advertise your product, and a lot of marketplaces do this, right? Um, you put your site or your product on their site, and then you can advertise theirs, essentially the Yellow Pages model. Is there anybody here that doesn't remember the Yellow Pages? I think we're good? All right, cool. Um, all right, so the single best avenue for advertising right now, I believe is Instagram, um, but it's for very specific <coughs> niches. For just about everybody else, Google is the way to go. Um, if Again, if you're selling on Amazon, Amazon outperforms anything else. So advertising on Amazon outperforms advertising anywhere else if you want people to actually buy your product. So, I mentioned this a little bit ago. Google is the number one search engine in the world, right? YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. Facebook, number three search engine. And we have not forgotten about Bing is number four. So depending on what year it is, Yahoo's either being powered by Bing or they're being powered by Google, right? They sort of uh, play one against the other every year or two years to get a better deal. Um, but between these search engines, so Google's not, or Yahoo's not it's a search engine anymore, but it's using one of these two and it's got enough traffic, it's one of the top five search engines. Is anybody curious why Facebook or YouTube are search engines? This is on straight volume. And then Amazon is next. Okay. So, YouTube is I want to learn something, I want to watch something. Facebook, I have an interest or a person, let's just say Bing is miscellaneous, Yahoo is miscellaneous, Google is miscellaneous, um, but it has better targeting than that. So let's say miscellaneous, targeted. Uh, I'll change this from person to targeted, and I'll explain that in a second. And Amazon is intent to buy. Okay. It's not fair comparing Google to everybody else because Google is targeted. Google also has recommendation and it also has intent to buy. However, you could stick eBay here in small letters. When you somebody searches on a marketplace is the best indicator that they are there to buy something. So if you're selling product, it might not be worth advertising here. If you exist on their marketplaces, it is better to spend your money on the marketplace. If you're selling service, don't waste your money here, right? All right. 
Any questions so far? Can I erase this? Hey, Toy. Yes, sir. Bing, Bing's also interesting because they, they have, um, Microsoft has LinkedIn now, and they're starting to do advertising. Correct. Within LinkedIn for the B2B type of. Yes, and Microsoft also has Linda, or, Yes, well, Microsoft now, since LinkedIn bought lynda.com, Microsoft bought GitHub, Microsoft bought LinkedIn. You can advertise on LinkedIn, but unless you're doing sit-stand desks or specific kinds of training, it might not be worth advertising on LinkedIn. So I'm assuming most people here have product, and you're less, LinkedIn is not where people think of yeah. to look for products, at least not yet. What about Baidu? Uh, Baidu is a large, very large site. I don't know Chinese. I think uh, like I looked it up, and I think it's actually more popular than both Bing and Yahoo. It is. China's got 1.4 billion people. Right. Any, <laughs> the, the Chinese equivalent of every site I've listed, except for Google and Amazon, I think these two, is bigger than the ones we have here. Okay, so uh, Baidu, Tencent, Weibo, the Weibo I think, all of these sites <coughs> are just as big if you speak Chinese or have a, a, a good linkage to be able to appeal to that audience, that is a great place to advertise. So most of us, if we speak more than one language, it is not Chinese, so we stay on this side of the, um, in this hemisphere, sort of stay on this side of the planet and advertise to Anglophones and Francophones. Okay. Pinterest? I'm sorry? Pinterest? You can advertise on Pinterest. Uh, in my experience, it's not worth the money, mostly because the Pinterest is fundamentally a bookmarking site, right? So the way that you get interest is to have a nice set of <laughs> Right? Uh, so you, you, you create a collection of images, a collection of links to something. If you make it appealing enough or if it's interesting enough, other people will link to it. And that's really all you need to do. There are people that get followed just for their, um, just for their collection of links. And this is true, here. I'm trying to find the women in the audience. Okay. There are a couple here, all right, three. Um, have you guys heard of Poshmark? Um, so Poshmark is a site where you can buy uh, gently used, usually, products. Uh, so uh, if you wanted to buy something from Chanel or Gucci or uh, Sherry Hill or um, I'm going to use mine, that's right, um, or other companies like that, right? Maybe you don't want to pay full price, you want to go to the prom, you want to go to a fancy wedding <coughs> that you're not getting married at, or you're going to a wedding that you are getting married at, and you want to wear that dress once, or wear, wear that jacket once, you want to have that necklace for the next three months, and when it's, it's no longer in season in your part of the country, you can resell it, right? Um, those are much more for individual users. However, they do have marketing avenues. I have not played with them, so I don't have an idea for sort of um, the efficacy as of yet. But as a general rule, if you're doing any kind of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, marketplace, as it makes sense for them to have some kind of advertising mechanism to sort of bump your listing up higher. Okay. Um, and if you're, again, the goal is, if you have your website, which ones make sense to link to these systems, right? So as of right now, Poshmark, for example, doesn't have an automated way to do that. But some of these other ones do. Okay. What's your thoughts on DuckDuckGo? My thoughts on DuckDuckGo? Yeah, it's number eight for the search engine. <coughs> as a pure search engine? Yes. Yes. So by that search engine, does it count Bing? Does it count Facebook? Does it count YouTube? Uh, I just know that in the SEO, SEO models, it's ranked number eight. I don't know how they came up with the numbers. All right, so. They do, they do take ads, though. So they do take ads. I would say go back to that list, and if they don't list these guys, they might be number eight. I don't know. I don't think so, though. But, but um, if they don't list these guys, then I'm not counting them. And here's the other reason I'm not counting them. Um, 
advertisers, maybe not you guys specifically, but advertisers are a greedy bunch. The more you can know about your customer, the better you can sell to them. DuckDuckGo specifically doesn't collect customer information, and so they are as effective as Google from five, no, eight, ten years ago, right? Which is very effective. It's more effective than a newspaper, direct mail, or billboards, but it's not as effective as Google, right? So as an advertiser, you don't want people to care about privacy. As an advertiser, you don't want to care about privacy either, right? I mean, you want to care about your privacy, but not your potential customer's privacy, right? As mo uh, the, the more information you can tell about your customer, the better you can target your, your sale, right? Um, all right, so we have, uh, who's it just came out uh, last week? The Mueller report, right? And they're talking about uh, election interference and all this stuff. And what people forget is that the same ad, same content, was used on two sides of the political aisle, right, on Facebook. So I, I did some work for a site right just before the election that said, hey, Trump's going to win. Everything's going to go nuts. Buy gold, right? And we placed another ad. Hillary's going to win. <laughs> Socialism is going to reign. <laughs> buy gold, <laughs> right? The message is the same, but the info I have on the customer makes it a lot more effective. If I did a third buy gold ad that just says buy gold, it doesn't have as much efficacy. If I even say it's gonna be a shit show, buy gold, still not as much efficacy. <laughs> as specific as you can get makes it easier to buy or to sell your product, which is why DuckDuckGo is not high on my list, right? Everybody else on this list, at least these players, I'm not sure about Amazon, I can get exhaustive information about them, about their customers, right? If not, I can't, if I can't pinpoint you specifically, I can tell that you like pandas or you like um, stuff with local politics or national politics or you like cars or you're between the age of something and something else or you like to watch movies they collect that information based on what you view on their sites right something i talked about last time i think and i will talk about more in a few minutes is tracking pixels all right who does not know what a tracking pixel is I'm gonna assume some people don't. All right, cool. So, a tracking pixel, I'm trying to decide if I should use a satellite analogy. No, okay. So, um, think of when you go to the hospital, right? <coughs> and you're there and they give you a little thingy on your wrist, right? And a nurse comes in, she looks at your thingy on your wrist, scans your barcode, she can pull up your information, Look at your chart, et cetera, et cetera. The doctor comes in, so you can scan your wrist, maybe allows you to enter certain rooms or prevents you from entering certain rooms, that kind of thing, right? Everybody understand that principle, right? So what a tracking pixel is, is a dot, usually an image or a line of JavaScript you put on your homepage or your, actually should really be on your footer, it should be everywhere on your site. And its job is like that scanner. Okay, your browser is you moseying around with your wrist bracelet and just waving your hand in front of every barcode. Now maybe in the DuckDuckGo wing, they don't scan your wrist, but everywhere else in the world, they are scanning your wrist, right? So I know that, for example, somebody has visited my bike site, this specific person <laughs> has visited my bike site 10 times in the last month, right? I might not know their name, I might not know their city, but I know that this specific browser has hit my site X number of times, right? Now, uh, none of us are trackable 
by looking at one website. However, if I go to, let's say, Politico and Wired and TechCrunch and what else do I go to? GitHub, right? You start painting a picture of me. If I go to WWE and Sci-Fi and NFL or MLB TV, you start painting a picture of me, right? Um, if I go to NPR and Slate, and I uh, can't think of other left sites at the moment, but all of these sites are sites I go to, but based on the clusters of information you have, you have a slightly different picture of me as a person, right? So the NPR tote bag loving version of me, you would sell something to. The rock loving version of me, you're not selling the tote bag to, right? I don't know if anybody has seen this thing. I just watched the trailer to this Hobbs and Shaw movie. It's coming out in August. I see not very many people. It's a Fast and Furious movie where they just skip all the preamble and have gone straight to superheroes. Okay? And I love it. My daughter and I are going to watch it at least once, maybe twice. Right? Now, the side of me that likes economics, discussing politics, is not going to get that advertisement. But the side of me that watches, you know, monster truck racing, or the Grand Tour, or anything with the rock in it, <laughs> gets that advertisement, right? Now, Google knows that all those different markers are me based on the tracking pixel, right? And that is why Google is so effective. That is why Facebook is so effective. The top two tracking pixels on the net at the moment are by Google and by Facebook, because everybody uses Google, Everybody uses Facebook. Maybe not everybody. Let's see. 2.4 million uh, billion people use Facebook, and everybody uses Google, right? Except for him, who uses DuckDuckGo, right? It's China. <laughs> or you're in China, right? Um, if that is the case, that means everybody has at least one baseline scan with Facebook or Google. Eventually, they will figure out your psychographics. Psychographics are, demographics is like your age, sex, race, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Psychographics is the idea to figure out more what you're thinking, right? The way people traditionally do this is with the magazines that you subscribe to, but most of us don't subscribe to magazines anymore. But again, if I had Wired the magazine, Popular Science, New Scientist, Washington Post, not Washington Post, Smithsonian. New Yorker, Smithsonian, I'm one kind of person, right? If I have uh, Wizard Magazine, if I have uh, Popular Mechanics, if I have Car and Driver, right? Those are two slightly different groups of people, right? I'm not selling a safari to the people that have Popular Mechanics but no Smithsonian or no um, I don't know. can't think of the other examples I used. Does that make sense? Are you guys with me? All right. So that is what the basis, or that's the power you can use with tracking pixels. But let's talk specifically for your websites what that means. All right? A tracking pixel, let's see if I can find an example of one. Okay, so you would never have to actually do it this way, but I'm just trying to find. Well, apparently that's not right. So I had mentioned before that. Well, how, how are you searching for it? I was just searching for Google and I was searching for analytics, but I'm not pulling analytics by itself. Try GA. Thanks. So. It's usually like a script, uh, like an external script, so it, it wouldn't be like a one pixel. Right. So, so like most page, of them are. I think you can view, view like the page media, and then in the page media is going to have like a list of all the resources as reference, and like the pixel will be there. 
Oh, that's not a bad idea. Um, actually, I think I might have found one. No, I have not found one. Oh, here we go. Ad service. No, this is for them displaying ads, not for tracking. Okay, what did you say? Media? Is it Firefox or is it Google? This is Firefox. Um, so you can do the network um, analysis thing, and then you can reload the page. Um, yeah, and then you can see like all the media that is referenced. So you can uh, sort it by the host name, and then you can see like the GA pixel and like all the other pixels from all the other services. All right, so this is, um, for somebody that's not a programmer, you don't have to worry about the specifics of this. I'm just trying to find an example here on whatever this website is. You could probably search it by like the file type right there. Yeah. And I don't see what the other parameters are here. So. Well, here's a couple. So here's a GA link. And GA is Google Analytics. All right. Does anybody not know what Google Analytics is? This is a good time to talk about it. All right, cool. So um, Google Analytics is a free service that Google gives to us to show us who comes and visits our site. Remember we were talking about how um, Google has a pixel that tracks people, the barcode scan? Well, Google gives us our own view to show us who came to our site. Now, it won't tell you a person's name, but it'll give you aggregate numbers. 700 people visited this page. 10,000 people visited this page. Six people went from this page to this page to this page to this page. That's the kind of thing that Google Analytics does. So it is free, so everybody uses it. And the reason why Google does it for us is because for it to work, we have to voluntarily drop their pixel on our website, okay? Um, and so obviously Google has their pixel, their tracking system on their website, but the more of us that put the pixels on our websites, the better they get a sense of who an individual user is, right? So same thing with Facebook. Facebook doesn't have Google Analytics, but they do give us the same kind of tracking pixel and they give us a benefit to that tracking pixel um, in something called targeted audiences. And so if a certain kind of person comes to your site all the time, I don't know who that is, let's say your site that makes, that sells skeins of yarn, right? Person that sells skeins of yarn, and I put a pixel on my site, 300 people have come to my site, I don't know who they are. But again, 2.4 billion people or accounts are on Facebook. So that person, whoever those people are on your site, are probably on Facebook. So Facebook can identify that Lynn Sampson or Jim Stevenson went to your site. They will not give you that person's name. But what they will do is you can say, hey, Facebook, all the people that, give, that come to my site, can you advertise to similar people? Okay, so Facebook has its markers to figure out information about users. So it figures out, you give Facebook information about your name, maybe your ethnicity, where you live, who your friends are, what your interests are. Take some combination of that data and it goes searching through all of Facebook for all the people that match those markers, right? And so that is what they define as a targeted audience. So when you find other people that match those markers, Facebook has now found you people that have never visited your site that are similar to the people that have visited your site. Does that make sense? So now when you have this virgin territory of people that have never visited your site, this now makes a great target audience to advertise to. Okay? Now for both of these to work, you have to have had your pixel in place for a while so that Google and Facebook can gather data. Um, and hopefully you've made some sales so you have a difference, you understand the difference between somebody that's a looky-loo and somebody that's actually pulling the trigger on your product, okay? Um, something I should mention here really quickly is Google Tag Manager, which is called GTM, and I'll talk about this in a minute, um, or expand on it. Hey, um, are you logged in onto this browser? Can I use Gmail? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just 
just leave your credit card number on there and be fine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> strong believer in two-factor authentication. All right. So, um, if you have, if you want to use these guys, Tag Manager or in our case Google Analytics, you have to have a Google account, a Gmail account, obviously. So, I need to log into my Gmail to get access to my Google Analytics, and I don't have anything here anymore. So, I used to have this site imported from Detroit and Toy.org. I don't think I have a pixel in here. Um, we'll just use imported from Detroit. Okay. So there's absolutely no data here. <laughs> but uh, what Google Analytics would do is it'll give you, you know, uh, tracking information over the course of a day. And for some subset of your users, it'll even give you real time information about who's visiting your site, what page they're currently on, what page they were previously on, etc. Okay. Um, so they expire at all, like. After like one year or like how, how long? I don't know what their, what their uh, time well, Because yours is probably expired here, right? Yeah, but this site has not been live in like three years or something. Um, so the, I think it used to be a year, but Google started pimping the, sorry. I think it used to be unlimited. No, I, people wouldn't want unlimited. But there's like Google Analytics 360 or something which costs a metric boatload of money, and that is probably where they have the like five or 10 year you know, uh, range of tracking. You can I don't know. Your, you can export your <coughs> analytics. Right, you can Content export your an analytics yourself. data, right. Yeah. But again, for this stuff to be effective, you, you have to essentially load it. You're either loading everything in real time every day to keep it all you know, uh, current, yeah. Or you're comparing, Google has stuff to help you compare previous and current data. I just mean like your really old stuff. If it's whatever that expiration, you could then bring it up in Design Studio or something like that. Like if you need If you needed old, to, yeah. That yeah. old stuff. Um, or you can, you know, you wouldn't pay, I don't know if it's still 100 grand or 100 plus for um, 360, but there are other tools you can use. Um, you can pipe them to other uh, software tools out there. All right. Um, so that's an example of the kind of UI you would get with Google Analytics. Right? So the reason I talked about Google Tag Manager, because somebody talked about LinkedIn, right? So let's say you were a company that did some specific kind of corporate training, right? LinkedIn then makes a lot of sense to advertise on, right? So you would want to, of course, advertise on Google still. Maybe you have some samples of your training videos on YouTube. Facebook might still make sense. Maybe, maybe. LinkedIn starts making sense here. And maybe GitHub or more likely Stack Overflow if you're a programmer might make sense as places to advertise to, right? Now, these guys also have their own tracking pixels, okay? So LinkedIn has its own tracking pixel. I can't remember the company behind Stack. Um, they have their own tracking pixel. So those are also tracking pixels because each one of these providers, you have to put their pixel or their code on your website, okay? And after a while, you now start having 10, 5, 10, 20 even pieces of JavaScript on your site, which slows down the site. So what Google Tag Manager is, is essentially you drop in one 
JavaScript snippet on your site. And then they essentially call, uh, acts as the container that holds all the other tracking pixels in here. So GA, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. I don't completely understand how it works, um, but it does, at least as far as Google cares for counting page speed and things like that for ranking, that process is somehow ranked better than if you have like 20, um, 10 or 20 JavaScript things on your site. Yep. So I think as a user, I block Google Tag Manager, like I block the domain name. Mm -hmm. Am I missing anything? You're missing being tracked. Okay. So, um, and the reason why you might care about being tracked is for retargeting, right? So I've talked about targeted audiences and, and the like, but another one is retargeting. I'm sure some of you have heard this before. Somebody comes to your yarn site and they leave they might never remember your yarn site again, right? So let's say I have this fantastic alpaca raw wool skein. You guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, I have some very fancy wool from Peru, right? And it costs like 30 bucks of skein, which is a bundle of yarn, right? And it's great stuff, it's great for mittens, let's say. And I think it's cool but I have other stuff to do. I have a life. I have to get back to actually working, whatever, and I forget about your site, okay? The idea of retargeting is because Google or Facebook or some other services I will mention, because they have their pixel on your site. Remember, they don't know it's you or they don't know it's me toying visiting your site. They know that this browser visited that site or visited this product page or the like. So because they know that it's this browser, when I go to another site like Reddit, and Reddit shows an ad, part of their system will say, wait a second, we recognize this browser, and we know that this browser visited the Yarn site. Does the Yarn site have any ads to show this guy? Right? When I go to, I don't know, we were talking about movies earlier, so I go to some movie, uh, to Rotten Tomatoes. And Rotten Tomatoes, as another publisher, serves me some ads. One of the ads might also show me the yarn site. I'm sure you guys have, especially when you're looking at something expensive, you've experienced that thing following you across the internet, right? Oh, yeah. Right, so this is an example of tracking pixels in action. They have now bound your visit to some page to your browser, and for the next 30, 60, 90 days, and if it's expensive, 120 days, as you're walking across the internet, they'll say, hey, this guy or this browser has checked out this site, this site, this site, this site. Are there any of those sites or any of those product pages related? And that's how they show you that information, okay? Now, that is annoying sometimes as a customer, but what if I really wanted that fancy llama wool, right? So now let's turn it on this head. You're the store owner. You want to move that llama wool. So how do you do it? Okay. So we come back again to the big advertisers or advertising platforms. Um, the biggest retargeting platform is by Google, which makes sense, by Google AdWords. Second is by Facebook, which also makes sense. Now. I don't know if it's still the case, but up till recently, Facebook was actually powered by another company called AdRoll. So there's Facebook internal advertising and then Facebook external advertising. Okay. So um, if you went to Rotten Tomatoes, right? Several uh, any good publisher that has millions of ads to, to uh, space for ads isn't going to use just one player. They're usually going to use two or three of these players. So maybe their premium stuff goes to Google or probably goes to Facebook. Second tier goes to Google. Uh, third tier goes to Bing or something, right? And so they're showing two or three different classes of ads on their site. So I could get an ad here from Google, from the Yarn site, 
And I could get an ad here, somewhere else on the site, for that rock movie I was talking about. The Rock, not like rock and roll. Okay, so here's my website. I've got some content. I have an ad here, more content. I have an ad here, I have an ad here. Each of these could, in theory, be served by different systems. And based on those different systems, they could give you completely random ads, right? Or they can give you ads based on this website. So this is like a gun site. You're not going to probably get the Wildlife Federation, right? If this is an NPR site, you're probably not going to get, I don't know, I can't think of something right now. The huh? The gun. NRA. Right. Yeah. Maybe not the NRA, right? <clears throat> Although the market, the demos are not necessarily completely separate. But yes, the, that same kind of thing. So these ads could be completely random, right? Could be based on the demo of this, can be based on the demo of you or psychographics of you as a user, and they can also be based on your targeting data, right? Whoever you visited recently. The higher up that stack you go, the more valuable that data is and the more likely you're going to buy, right? Just like my example for buying gold, the more information I have about you, the more effective my ads can be. Does that all make sense? Okay. So, for people that are starting out, Facebook and Google are the places to be. One, because they're just freaking huge and they serve millions of people a day, millions of businesses. They have, Google has a relatively easy system, but they both have, there are lots of extensive tutorials on how to use them. But if you want to go a little off the beaten path, AdRoll, the same people that power ads for Facebook externally, um, they're a good one to use for retargeting. There is retargeter.com. There's retargeting.com. I don't know why they're so close. 